Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of Kashmir Radio here in Blowing in the Wind, the real weather forecast. My name is Andre Vazulmandli, and I will dedicate this program to the wind. Now I'm sitting on the top of Kollegium Hungarikum Berlin, a six-floor building in the middle of Mitte, Berlin. While I'm speaking, you can hear the sound of my self-made instrument, the disharmonica, which right next to me at the moment, and it's functioning as a sound statue played in real time by the wind. I built this harmonica by hammering and welding metal pieces in 2015 in Thessaloniki, Greece. For this, I used more than 100 broken harmonicas and recycled metal collected from the city. This instrument has a unique metallic sound, and as it turned out, it can also be played by the wind itself. Basically, you have to imagine a layer of 100 harmonica reed plates which are the inside parts of the harmonica. If the wind is powerful enough, depending on its angle, the different notes of the harmonica reed plates contemporarily make sounds. In this case, we are talking about almost 1,000 notes, but of course, a big part of them are broken. So the reason for me sitting on the top of this building is that I want you to listen to the wind that is blowing in real time. And we are lucky today because it has been the strongest wind this week so far. And we are even more lucky because it's not raining at this moment. You can listen to this in the next 40 minutes, but at the same time I will provide you with some text of mythologies, of wind, poems, scientific descriptions, definitions and explanation. We will start from the past when wind was a fear because it was considered to be a punishment of deities. Through poems and scientific definitions we will end with the importance of wind to the ecology and to the renewable energy industry. For the readings, I will have some help of my colleague from Sound Studies, Lara Gallagher, and the famous English poet Ted Hughes. The scientific texts are from the National Geographic's Encyclopedia about the wind. Enjoy the blowing in the wind. The Myth of Anamoe, a weather folklore, by Jamie McLeod, posted in Weather Weather Folklore. Long before modern science began to understand the processes that create our weather, people made up their own explanations. Many of these accounts were fantastic in nature, with evil or benevolent gods, monsters and spirits controlling the elements. In this series, we'll explore some of the, these ancient myths and share the science behind them. Weather, mythology, weatherology. The myth of Anamoy. To our early ancestors, the wind must have been a real mystery. One moment, the air would be still and stifling, and in the next, a refreshing breeze could move through. Later, a gale might blow in, destroying massive trees or even buildings. The wind came in from different directions and had different temperaments. Sometimes it was helpful and other times it seemed almost wingful in its fury. What was going on? To the ancient Greeks, this split personality was easily explained. They believed there were four wind gods, one representing each cardinal direction, each with a personality of his own. Like the other gods of Olympus, the wind gods, known collectively as the Anamoi, came complete with very human flows and could be benevolent or cruel as the mood struck them. 
These gods were Boreas, god of the north wind, Notus, god of the south wind, Zephyrus, god of the west wind, and Eurus, god of the east wind. In addition to each representing his own direction, each of the anemoi was associated with a specific type of wind. Boreas brought biting cold winter winds. Notus was in charge of the raging storms of late summer and autumn. And Zephyrus brought light breezes during the spring and early summer. Eurus was associated with bad luck. His wind was often accompanied by warm rain. The Anamoi were most often depicted as winged men. As men, they often got up to mischief, including abducting women for their own pleasure. They could also become invisible, taking the form of gusts of wind or become horses. When a storm or other wind-related occurrence worked to the benefit of a person or people, as when the Persian army was prevented from attacking Athens due to a powerful storm at sea, it was said to be a sign of the God's favor. Today, we know that wind is simply a part of nature, with no will of its own, though it can be beneficial or devastating. It blows without regard for its effect on humans. Er i on dolo world, the equivalent of the will be clearly remembered for many thousands perilous at sea and abroad. I ha gwi ha mora, I ha stjerman berdicha, the cause flows. A jane dilcha krucha a strokik, and may work august over egnesir. Er i ha kjærmund on dolo world. Big Quinn and Kurvenik will be clearly remembered for his any meal to do many thousands of Pimalia Mercy Tier at sea and abroad. He had a Guiha Moira wind. He had a Stearman and Berdicha. The cause flew. A Jane Dilcha Kurvenicha struck it and made work. Augustus Ober Agnes Sayer. In rural Irish communities of the early 1800s, weather forecasting was anything but precise. There are many tales of people who were locally revered for accurately predicting turns in the weather. Yet without the science, we now take for granted weather events were often viewed through the prism of superstition. One particular storm in 1839 was so peculiar that rural folk in the west of Ireland, stunned by its ferocity, feared it could be the end of the world. Some blamed it on the fairies, and elaborate folk tales sprang from the event. Those who lived through the big wind never forgot it. And for that reason, the horrendous storm became a famous question formulated by the British bureaucrats who ruled Ireland seven decades later. The great storm battered Ireland. Snow fell across Ireland on Saturday, January 5th, 1839. Sunday morning dawned with cloud cover that amounted to a typical Irish sky in winter. The day was warmer than usual and the snow from the night before began to melt. By midday, it began to rain heavily precipitation coming in off the North Atlantic slowly spread eastward. By early evening, heavy winds began to howl, and then on Sunday night, an unforgettable fury was unleashed. Hurricane force winds began to batter the west and north of Ireland as a freak storm roared out of the Atlantic. For most of the night, until just before dawn, the winds mauled the countryside, uprooting large trees, tearing thatched roofs off houses, and toppling barns and church spires. There were even reports that grass was torn off hillsides. As the worst part of the storm occurred in the hours after midnight, families huddled in total darkness, terrified by the relentless howling winds and sounds of destruction. Some homes caught fire when the bizarre winds blasted down chimneys, throwing hot embers from hearths throughout cottages. Casualties and damage. Newspaper reports claimed that more than 300 people were killed in the windstorm, but accurate figures are difficult to pin down. There were reports of houses collapsing on people, as well as of houses burning to the ground. There's no doubt there was considerable loss of life, as well as many injuries. Many thousands were made homeless, and the economic devastation inflicted on a population that was nearly always facing famine must have been massive. 
Stores of food meant to last through the winter had been destroyed and scattered. Livestock and sheep were killed in vast numbers. Wild animals and birds were likewise killed and crows and jackdaws were nearly made extinct in some parts of the country. And it must be kept in mind that the storm struck in a time before government disaster response programs existed. The people affected essentially had to fend for themselves. This house has been far out at sea all night. The woods crashing through darkness, the booming hills, winds stampeding the fields under the window, floundering black astride and blinding in wet till day rose. Then, under an orange sky, the hills had new places, and wind wielded blade light, luminous black and emerald, flexing like the lens of a mad eye. At noon, I scaled them along the house side, as far as the coal house door. Once, I looked up. Through the bright wind that dented the balls of my eyes, the tent of the hills drummed and strained its guile. The fields quivering, as the skyline a grimace, at any second to bang and vanish with a flap. The wind flung the magpie away, and the black back gull bent like an iron bar, slowly. The house rang like some fine green goblet in the note that any second would shatter it. Now, deep in chairs, in front of the great fire, we grip our hearts and cannot entertain book, thought, or each other. We watch the fire blazing and feel the roots of the house move but sit on, seeing the window tremble to come in, hearing the stones cry out under the horizons. Wind is the movement of air caused by the uneven heating of the earth by the sun. It does not have much substance, you cannot see it or hold it, but you can feel its force. It can dry your clothes in the summer and chill you to the bone in the winter. It is strong enough to carry sailing ships across the ocean and rip huge trees from the ground. It is the great equalizer of the atmosphere, transporting heat, moisture, pollutants, and dust great distances around the globe. Landforms, processes, and impacts of wind are called Aeolian landforms, processes, and impacts. Differences in atmospheric pressure regenerate winds. At the equator, the sun warms the water and land more than it does the rest of the globe. Warm equatorial air rises higher into the atmosphere and migrates toward the poles. This is the low pressure system. At the same time, cooler, denser air moves over Earth's surface toward the equator to replace the heated air. This is the high pressure system. Winds generally blow from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. The boundary between these two areas is called the front. The complex relationships between fronts cause different types of wind and weather patterns. Prevailing winds are winds that blow from a single direction over a specific area of the Earth. Areas where prevailing winds meet are called convergent zones. Generally, prevailing winds blow east-west rather than north-south. 
This happens because of Earth rotation generates what is known as the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect makes wind systems twist counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The Coriolis effect causes some winds to travel along the edges of the high pressure and low pressure systems. These are called geostrophic winds. In 857, Dutch meteorologist Christoph Bayer's ballot formulated a law about geostrophic winds. When you stand with your back to the wind in the northern hemisphere, low pressure is always to your left. In the southern hemisphere, low pressure is to your right. Wind zones. The Earth contains five major wind zones. Polar easterlies, westerlies, horse latitudes, trade winds, and the doldrums. Polar easterlies are dry, cold, prevailing winds that blow from the east. They emanate from the polar highest areas of high pressure around the north and the south poles. Polar easterlies flow to low pressure areas in subpolar regions. Westerlies are prevailing winds that blow from the west at mid latitudes. They are fed by polar easterlies and winds from the high pressure horse latitudes, which sandwich them on either side. Westerlies are strongest in the winter, when pressure over the pole is low, and weakest in summer, when the polar high creates stronger polar easterlies. The strongest westerlies blow through the roaring 40s, a winding zone between 40 and 50 degrees latitude in the southern hemisphere. Throughout the roaring 40s, there are a few land masses to slow winds. The tip of South America and Australia, as well as the islands of New Zealand, are the only large land masses to penetrate the roaring 40s. The westerlies of the roaring 40s were very important to sailors during the age of exploration, when explorers and traders from Europe and Western Asia used the strong winds to reach the spice markets of the Southeast Asia and Australia. The horse latitudes are in the narrow zone of warm, dry climates between westerlies and the trade winds. Horse latitudes are about 30 and 35 degrees north and south. Many deserts from the rainless Atacama of South America to the arid Kalahari of Africa are part of the horse latitudes. The prevailing winds at the horse latitudes vary, but are usually light. Even strong winds are often short in duration. Trade winds are the powerful prevailing winds that blow from the east across the tropics. Trade winds are generally very predictable. They have been instrumental in the history of exploration, communication, and trade. Ships relied on trade winds to establish quick, reliable routes across the vast Atlantic and later Pacific Oceans. Even today, shipping depends on trade winds and the ocean currents they drive. Trade winds that form over land, called continental trade winds, are warmer and drier than those that form over the ocean, maritime trade winds. The relationship between continental and maritime trade winds can be violent. Most tropical storms, including hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons, develop as trade winds. Differences in air pressure over the ocean cause these storms to develop. As the dense, moist winds of the storm encounter the drier winds of the coast, the storm can increase the intensity. Strong trade winds are associated with the lack of precipitation, while weak trade winds carry rainfall far inland. The most famous rain pattern in the world, the Southeast Asian monsoon, is a seasonal, moisture-laden trade wind. Besides ships and rainfall, trade winds can also carry particles of dust and sand for thousands of kilometers. Dust storms in the tropics can be devastating for the local community. 
Valuable topsoil is blown on the veil and visibility can drop to almost zero. Across the ocean, dust makes the sky hazy. These dust storms are often associated with the dry, low pressure areas and the lack of tropical storms. Total drums. The place where trade winds of the two hemispheres meet is called the Intertropical Convergence Zone. The area around the Intertropical Convergence Zone is called the Total Drums. Prevailing winds in the doldrums are very weak and the weather is unusually calm. The intertropical convergence zone straddles the equator. In fact, the low pressure doldrums are created as the southeast equatorial region and causes air masses to rise and travel north and south. Although monsoons impact tropical as well as equatorial regions, the wind itself is created as the intertropical convergence zone moves slightly away from the equator each season. This change in the doldrums disturbs the usual air pressure, creating the moisture-laden Southeast Asian monsoon. The results of the Wind traveling at different speeds, different altitudes, and over water or land can cause different types of patterns and storms. Jet streams. Jet streams are geostrophic winds that form near the boundaries of emphasis with different temperatures and humidity. The rotation of the Earth and its uneven heating in the sun also contributes to the formation of high altitude jet streams. Hurricane. A hurricane is a giant spiraling tropical storm that can pack wind speeds of over 257 km per hour and unleash more than 9 trillion liters of rain. These same tropical storms are known as hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean, cyclones in the northern Indian Ocean and typhoons in the western Pacific Ocean. These tropical storms have a spiral shape. The spiral develops as a high pressure area twists around the low pressure area. Wind conditions that can lead to hurricanes are called tropical disturbances. They begin in warm ocean waters when the surface temperatures are at least 26.60 degrees Celsius. If the disturbance lasts for more than 24 hours and gets to speeds of 61 km per hour, it becomes known as the Tropical Depression. When a Tropical Depression speeds up to 63 to 117 km per hour, it is known as a Tropical Storm and is given a name. Meteorologists name the storms in alphabetical order and alternate with female and male names. When a storm reaches 119 km per hour, it becomes a hurricane and is rated from 1 to 5 in severity on the Sapphire-Simpson scale. A Category 5 hurricane is the strongest storm possible on the Sapphire-Simpson scale. Winds of Category 5 blow at 252 km per hour. Hurricanes spin around the low-pressure center known as the eye. Sinking air inside the eye makes it very calm. The eye is surrounded by a violent circular eye wall. This is where the storm's strongest winds and rain are. Hurricane Ethel, the strongest hurricane in recorded history, roared across the Gulf of Mexico in September 1960. Winds were sustained at 260 km per hour. Hurricanes bring destruction to coastal ecosystems and communities. When a hurricane reaches land, it often produces waves that can reach 6 meters high and may be pushed by high winds 161 kilometers inland. These storm surges are extremely dangerous and pose 90% of all hurricane deaths. The deadliest hurricane on record is the Great Hurricane of 1780. Although sophisticated meteorological equipment was not available at the time, 
Winds may have reached 320 km per hour as the hurricane hit Barbados and other islands in the Caribbean Sea. Hurricanes can be destructive on other ways. High winds can create tornadoes. Heavy rains contribute to the floods and landslides, which may occur many kilometers away. Damage to homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, roads, and transportation systems can devastate communities and entire regions. The best defense against a hurricane is an accurate forecast that gives people time to get out of its way. The National Hurricane Center issues hurricane watches for storms that may endanger communities and hurricane warnings for storms that will reach land within 24 hours. Cyclones Cyclones blow through the Indian Ocean in the same way hurricanes blow across the Atlantic. Cyclones blow in with air masses from the east, often the South China Sea or the South. The most powerful and devastating cyclone in recorded history was the 1970 Bola Cyclone. Like Hurricane Katrina, the Bola Cyclone was Category 3 storm. Typhoon. Typhoons are tropical storms that develop over the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Their formation is identical to hurricanes and cyclones. Typhoons form as equatorial winds and blow westward before turning north and merging with westerlies around the mid latitudes. Typhoons can impact the wide area of the Eastern Pacific. The islands of the Philippines, China, Vietnam, and Japan are the most affected. However, typhoons have also been recorded as far as the United States, Minnesota, Hawaii, and even Alaska. Nor'easters and blizzards. A nor'easter is a strong winter storm that combines with snowfall, strong winds, and very cold temperatures. It blows from the northeast along the east coast of the United States and Canada. The strong nor'easter is called a blizzard. Blizzards can isolate and paralyze areas for days, especially if the area rarely has snowfall and does not have equipment to clear it from the streets. Monsoon. The monsoon is a seasonal change in the prevailing wind system of an area. They always blow from cold, high-pressure regions. Monsoons are part of a year-long cycle of uneven heating and cooling of tropical and mid-latitude coastal regions. Monsoons are part of the climate of Australia, Southeast Asia, and in the south of the region of North America. The air over the land is heated and cooled more quickly than the air over the ocean. In summer, this means warm land air rises, creating the spaces for the cool and moist air from the ocean. As the land heats the moist air, it rises, cools, condenses and falls back to earth as rain. During the winter, land cools more quickly than the ocean. But the warm air over the ocean rises, allowing cool land air to flow in. Most winter monsoons are cool and dry, while the summer monsoons are warm and moist. Asia's winter monsoons bring cool, dry air from the Himalaya mountains. The famous summer monsoon, on the other hand, develops over the Indian Ocean, absorbing tremendous amounts of moisture. Summer monsoons bring warmth and precipitation to India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. The summer monsoon is essential for the health and economies of the Indian subcontinent. Aquifers are filled, allowing water for drinking, hygiene, industry, and irrigation. Tornado. The tornado, also called a twister, 
is violently rotating in funnel of air. Tornadoes can occupy individually or in multiples as two spinning in vortexes of air rotating around each other. Tornadoes can occur as water spouts or land spouts spinning in from hundreds of meters in the air to connect to the land or water with clouds to the bow. Although destructive tornadoes can occur at any time of day, most of them occur between 4 and 9 p.m. local time. Tornadoes often occur during intense thunderstorms called supercells. A supercell is a thunderstorm with a powerful rotating upturn. A draft is simply a vertical motion. This is powerful updraft is called a mesocyclone. Depending on the temperature and moisture of the air, a tornado can last a few minutes or over an hour. However, cool winds eventually wrap around the tornado and cut off the supply of warm air that feeds it. The tornado thins out into the rope-like stage and dissipates a few minutes later. Most tornadoes have wind speeds of less than 177 km per hour and are about 76 meters across. They can travel for several kilometers before dissipating. However, the most powerful tornadoes can have wind speeds of more than 482 km per hour and be more than 3 km across. These tornadoes can travel across the ground for dozens of kilometers and then through several states. These violent storms occur around the world, but the United States is a major hotspot with about a thousand tornadoes every year. The best protection against a tornado is early warning. In areas where tornadoes are common, many communities have tornado warning systems. In Minnesota, for example, toll towers throughout neighborhoods sound an alarm if a tornado is near. Impacts on climate Wind is a major factor in determining weather and climate. Wind carries heat, moisture, pollutants, and pollen to new areas. Many daily weather patterns depend on the wind. The coastal region, for instance, undergoes changes in wind direction daily. The sun heats the land more quickly than the water. Warm air above the land rises, and cooler air above the water moves in over the land, creating an inland breeze. Coastal communities are usually much cooler than their inland neighbors. San Francisco is a coastal city in sunny California, and yet the author Mark Twain noticed that the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Wind affects the climate of a mountainous area differently. Rain shadows are created as wind interacts with a mountain range. As wind approaches a mountain, it brings moisture with it, which condenses as rain and other precipitation before coming over the crest of the mountain. On the other side of the mountain, dry, downslope winds can speed through mountain passes at nearly 160 km per hour. One of the most familiar of these downslope winds is the fern. Fern winds, nicknamed snow eaters, develop as air descends over the Alps, creating a warmer climate in Central Europe. Winds also help dry ocean surface currents around the world. The Antarctic circumpolar current transports cold, nutrient and rich water around Antarctica. The Gulf Stream brings warmer water from the Gulf of Mexico up to the east coast of North America and across the Atlantic to Northern Europe. Due to the Gulf Stream, Northern Europe enjoys a much warmer, milder climate than other areas at similar latitudes such as the United States state of Alaska.
impact on ecology. Wind has the power to move particles of earth, usually dust or sand, in great quantities and over far distances. Thus, from the Sahara, Kras is the Atlantic to create easy sunsets in the Caribbean. Winds transport volcanic ash and debris for thousands of kilometers. Winds carried ash from the 2010 eruption of Eyjafjallajökull, a volcano in Iceland, as far west as Greenland and as far east as Great Britain. The massive 1883 eruption of Krakatoa, an island volcano in Indonesia, had even more dramatic atmospheric results. Winds carried volcanic ash and debris high in the atmosphere across the globe. Europe endured years of cold, damp summers and pink sunsets. Winds' ability to move Earth can evolve the landscape. In some cases, this takes place in the desert as the sand dunes migrate and change in shape over time. Wind energy Wind has been used as a source of energy for more than a thousand years. It has pushed ships around the globe and been captured in wind wheels to pump water. It has turned giant stones to grind grains, make paper, sew logs, and crush ore. Today, most wind energy is used to generate electricity for homes, businesses, hospitals, schools, and industry. Wind is a renewable resource that does not directly cause pollution. Wind energy is harnessed through powerful turbines. Wind turbines have a tall, tubular tower with two or three propeller-like blades rotating at the top. When the wind turns the blades, the blades turn a generator and create electricity. Often, wind turbines are collected in windy areas in arrays known as wind farms. Many wind farms have been established on mountains, in valleys and offshore, as the air from the ocean interacts with land air. Some people think wind turbines are ugly and complain about the noises they make. The slowly rotating blades can also kill birds and birds, but not nearly as many as far as power lines and high-rise buildings. The economic drawback to wind farms, however, is the wind itself. If it's not blowing, there is no electricity generated. Still, use of wind energy has more than quadrupled between 2000 and 2006. Germany has the most installed wind energy capacity, followed by Spain, the United States, India and Denmark. Development is also growing quickly in France and China. Industry experts predict that if this pace of growth continues, by 2050, one third of the world's electricity needs could be met by wind. So welcome back to the top of the CHB here in Mitte, Berlin. I would like to thank you for this more than half an hour. And I will come back after at 23.30, but only with the wind sounds of the disharmonica. While you could hear the texts, I was modifying the sound of the disharmonica with a reverb. Thank you. See you later.
Ain't no way.